Hi, I'm Natasha Levitan. Uh, I'm doing a project in facial recognition. Um, I wanted to solve a problem um, um, using data from um, faces in the wild. And um, I think the, the problem with facial recognition that you have to solve is given two images um, to see how similar they are, or how different they are, whether they are identified as the same person or as different pe people. And uh, this is done using uh, distance threshold based on the triplet loss vectors. Um, facial recognition technology is becoming very widespread and soon will be even more. It will be used uh, at work instead of turnstiles, instead of cards. Uh, you should be able to recognize someone automatically from security cameras and tracked along social media. And given the uh, people's propensity for the large data sets, uh, given people's propensity for selfies, um, the accuracy of facial recognition is becoming uh, better. Um, the software that I used was a Python uh, Jupyter Notebook. Um, I used Pandas, NumPy, Dilib, Matplotlib. Um, Dilib I installed uh, with CMake, um, and I used GitHub to download uh, data sets. I was working with uh, Macintosh. It's a pretty good Macintosh, uh, and I have a pretty good memory in it. Um, uh, the, the data set was uh, labeled Faces in the Wild, which has about 13,000 images collected from the web. Uh, each face is labeled with the name of the person. Um, and I also used Keras Open Face model, um, which I then extended. And that model was trained with um, data sets in Face Scrub and Casa Web Face. Um, in general, the way that I approached it is um, uh, I installed uh, a few like Python libraries. I downloaded the data set. Um, I uh, loaded the data and I extended the pre-trained model with a triplet loss layer. Um, I ran the compiled model for 10 epochs. Um, Dilib was used for facial detection for the landscape of the faces and OpenCV used for uh, image transformation and cropping. And a line Dilib utility is used for um, like figuring out the face. Um, and then I tested it with the classifiers and prediction. Uh, triple loss uh, has a concept, has to do with uh, three images. So we have the anchor images. The anchor image is the original image. We have a positive image, which is the same identity as the, our anchor image. And we have a negative, which is completely different person. And after we train the model, the distance between the anchor and the positive um, person becomes very small. And the distance between the anchor and the negative person, um, <laughs> negative vector, becomes very large. Um, so the code overview. Um, is the following. Um, uh, this is, I downloaded the shape predictor for the facial landmarks, um, which is a, like a shortcut for Dlib, and it does it really well. Um, the uh, model is created from the preloaded and then for small two model. Um, I have, I, uh, I have, defined triple loss vector, um, triple loss function by, um, by figuring out the sum of the square distances between the anchor uh, and the positive and the negative distance, um, the sum of the square of the anchor and the negative. And this, this function determines the sum of the maximum. And then the, the train model is, um, trained with the triple loss and uh, the model is then compiled. And then here we are using our uh, data set labeled faces in the wild uh, to see like to test it. So we are loading the landmarks on the faces. And the first thing that we have to do is uh, because the original uh, train model 
is aligned and bounded, we reverse the images in the correct um, RGB order. And then um, the landmark indexes is using outer eyes and nose as the as the alignment. And so we have here the original image, the image with the bound box and the image uh, that is cropped. Um, and then we, we uh, calculate the embedded vectors for, the, for our trained model. And here we um, calculate the distance between two images. So we have a pair of uh, images that are of the same person. And with a triple loss um, uh, function, the distance you can see is very small. And um, another pair of the different people, the distance is large. So this would be the anchor and the, the negative. Uh, so we have to figure out then what is really the, the distance, how do we calculate the distance and what's the accuracy. So at um, our distance threshold is 0.73 which has the accuracy uh, of 96.2%, which is pretty accurate. Um, and to see the distances of the positive pairs, what's the spread of it is uh, approximately this. And the distance of the negative pairs, because we have different number of them, is um, this. Uh, then we try to compare the SVN and KNN encoder to see what the uh, what the identities are. And so we train the examples of 10 identities and uh, test in another 10 identities. And we use the um, KNN classifier and um, linear SVC classifier, and we fit uh, both. And um, the accuracy of KNN classifier is 90%. The accuracy of uh, SVM is 95%. So this is a larger percentage. So we use this one. So we load our example image that we want to predict who this is. And we use S S SVM uh, to predict it. And we indeed recognize this person as Tom Hanks. Um, and then um, we use TSNI to see uh, this is the, the toy data set for to see how uh, similar uh, or dissimilar the, the people are. And you can see that they are all clustered in clusters, which are really quite distinguished. So the, the similarities between similar images is, is really quite, quite distinctive. Um, um, lessons learned that um, We, I think, um, as the data sets will increase, the accuracy will be increased as well. So this uses, uh, you know, like a very few images of each person uh, to train um, the, the model. I think uh, the accuracy of this will increase where uh, it will be similar to one shot encoding and the accuracy of that will increase uh, in the future. Thank you.